Welcome, he fans. Time for another trip to Eternia. This time we're taking a look at the newest addition to the Masters of the Universe Classics line. It's He-Man's Heroic Armored Horse. His name is Stridor. And if you'd like to get your own steel steed for the most powerful man in the universe, they're in stock now at Big Bad Toy Store. The perfect companion for He-Man. In 2016, Night Stalker was released in the Classics line, and I immediately wondered, What about Stridor? It took two years, but we finally have the other Eternian Robo Stallion. Like the Maddie Collector releases of the Classics figures and vehicles, Strider comes with an outer box to protect the packaging for those who want to keep him mint in box. And a nice upgrade from the old Maddie Collector days is the package inside is now wrapped with bubble wrap to protect it even further. If you're not planning on opening it, this will still make a beautiful display piece thanks to the giant window that gives you a great view of Strider. And since this has never been on a store shelf, no shelf wear. It's great that the Grayskull style of art has been retained so that it'll fit in with the Maddie Collector Classics releases. And on the back are some of the new offerings for the Classics line. Okay, let's let the Cyber Horse roam. Extra care has been taken to protect Stridor during shipping. He's securely attached to his plastic shell and even has these shoulder caps to keep him even more secured. So as you've probably noticed from watching my videos, it's not just about the toy and its functionality and play features for me. The character is just as important. Being a big Western fan, I've got an affinity for horses. And since Filmation's other show, Brave Star, is one of my all-time favorite animated shows, and Brave Star's robotic Big Pard 3030 is my favorite character on that show, I've naturally got a big soft spot for any Filmation robotic horse. Who is he? What's his story? Well, Big Pard, Strider only appeared in one episode of Masters of the Universe, Origin of the Sorceress, and his screen time was split with the Origin of the Sorceress storyline. But even so, the character received a pretty nice little arc. He was created by Man at Arms with two main attributes. He has terrific strength, which comes in handy for hauling heavy loads, and a computer system that can detect trouble quickly. And his other attribute is for defense purposes. <laughs> Wow! He can warn the people of Eternia and Etheria at the same time with those pipes. When He-Man gets called away on a mission, he decides to take Stridor along instead of Battle Cat. A robot like Stridor might come in handy. Well then take him, He-Man, with my best wishes. And even trusts him enough to transform from Adam to He-Man in front of him, which puts him in pretty rare company. By the power of Grayskull! <laughs> Maybe it's not just trust. At that point, He-Man just thought of Strider as a robot, not a sentient living creature. But being a non-living thing provided another hidden talent. He was able to pass through force fields that could keep living things out. A little further, Strider. Come on, you can do it! Strider proves to be more than just a robot. He's just as noble and self-sacrificing as He-Man. And because the adventure took a lot out of the poor guy, He-Man decides to repay the favor and give him a ride back to Eternos. Stridor carried me here. It's only fair that I return the favor. That was another great life lesson. When someone does you a solid, do one back for them. In fact, go even farther. And after what Strider just did, I'd carry him to the other side of the planet if I had to. Okay, let's talk about articulation. The original didn't have much, but the Classics version has tons in the legs. They bend at the body, knee, and foot. Interestingly, all of the legs on mine move smoothly except for one that feels like a ratchet joint. They all hold securely though, and the bend in the foot allows him to have the same raised foot pose as the original Strider released in 84. And the posability allows for some powerful hind kicks to the evil forces of Skeletor. Yeah! Let's do some stomping! He's so sturdy, he can even stand up on his hind legs. Hi-ho silver style. His tail helps a bit with keeping him balanced. The tail has quite a bit of range as well. It can go left and right, up and down, and check this out. It can pivot in and out, thanks to being on a ball joint. 
That's some serious posability for a tail. The head has tons of posability too, thanks to these separate neck plates. It functions like a vertebrae. Each plate can move on its own and gives a lot of range. He can give that charming head tilt that horses do, or he can look straight up to keep an eye out for airborne threats or allies. On the cartoon, Strider was a lot like Mossman, who was never depicted as directly attacking anyone, just inanimate objects. Oops. Sorry, Rockon. And he didn't have any weapons on the show either, but like the original toy, this classics version retains the original side laser cannons, made of some bendy plastic, and the rear turret laser can turn left and right. His only accessories are two removable masks. The first one looks like the one that came with the original toy. It's made of some very soft plastic, and has become a bit warped from how it was squished to the side in the package. It's not symmetrical anymore when you remove it. There's an easy fix for this though. Just heat it up with a hairdryer for a minute. This will make it even floppier temporarily. So when you put it back on him, it'll reform to the shape of Strider's head as it cools down. Nice and centered now, and it only took a minute to fix. Strider's other mask is an orange recolor of the mask that was included with Night Stalker from 2016. This was originally going to be the only mask included with this version, but fans demanded that the original toy version mask be included as well. Since I don't own the Classics Night Stalker, I actually really like this mask. It looks like a Four Horsemen, the artists, not the wrestlers, 2000X version of Strider. I think Strider likes it too. And a third look is No Mask. He reminds me a lot of 3030 this way, except more happy-go-lucky. The plastic feels different on the two masks. The Night Stalker recolor is sturdier. It's great that the original toy version mask was included, but it feels like it was made with a cheaper plastic. And a look at some of the detailing. There's a console in front of the rider that's a good old-fashioned sticker, which I like since it takes me back to the days when most details on Masters of the Universe vehicles were stickers and not sculpting. And some machinery sculpting on the side. Many fans were hoping for a retool here, or at least a sticker featuring the classic shield design from the original. But I'm sure that option will be available by a talented customizer for those who want it. Okay, let's talk about how Stridor fares as a steed for Masters of the Universe Classics figures. Even though Stridor's lone adventure in the cartoon was with He-Man, in the toy line and mini-comic, he was more associated with Fisto. Does the giant fisted one fit? You're about to find out. Sort of. These classics figures don't have much forward bend in their legs thanks to the fuzzy shorts that hang over. And Fisto seems to have even less range than He-Man. The sword holder on his back gets in the way a bit too. You can wedge him in there, but I don't like forcing these figures in like that. You can warp the plastic on the shorts by doing that. The figures fit inside Strider like the original, but I kind of wish that you could have the figure in a straddle position, like on a real horse. He's way too wide for that though. It's not a bad look. Fisto's bionic fist goes nicely with Strador's robotic components, but I think the rider sits a little too low. It looks more like the figure is driving Strador than riding a horse. So I like to have my figure actually standing up, almost like he's riding a chariot. Strider is so huge, it actually looks a little closer to what the figure would look like if he was straddling. And how about a little past meets present? Here's the classic Stridor and Fisto with the originals. This is what I really like about the classics line. The design is so true to the original. It's like the original is standard definition, and the new version is HD. It's the same look, just with more detail. I also like it when they don't go overboard on the upgrades. The legs on the new one aren't on ball joints, so it still feels rigid like the original. And the guns are basically the same. And there's that shield sticker I mentioned earlier that's missing from the new version. When so many of the original's features have been recreated so faithfully, I can see why this oversight would stick in a lot of people's craw. There's a slight color difference. They're a bit darker on the original. The brighter colors on the new version make them look a bit more tune accurate, as well as just plain newer and more vibrant. E-Man has a little more range in his legs than Fisto, so he fits in the seated position better. But again, he's just a bit too low for my liking. I prefer the look of the standing position much more. And here's a comparison I have to do. Here's Stridor along with the other Filmation and Mattel Techno Horse, 3030 from Bravestar. Oh no! I'm a pony! Yep, 
The Brave Star figures were much larger than the original Masters of the Universe figures, and they're still taller than the Classics figures, but Classics Stridor dwarfs the original 3030. Let's see how they measure up in biped mode. Now you're talking! Thirty thirty measures up a little bit better when they're both upright, but Stridor is still taller. And he's much sturdier too. This thirty thirty can't stand upright on his own unless he's got this figure stand propping him up. Mm, I understand. I just don't like it. And in case you're curious, Strider's mask doesn't fit on 3030's head. And 3030's harness almost fits on Strider's head, but it pops off as soon as you let it go. Too small. And here he is with a few other Masters classic steeds. Alongside Swift Wind, since He-Man's sister has always had her horse companion, it's cool to give He-Man an equestrian accomplice as well, even if he is just a robot. And alongside Arrow, Bo's steed. And He-Man's original ride, Battle Cat, who, despite being a giant ferocious tiger, looks like a kitten compared to this colossal colt. He-Man atop Battle Cat is an iconic image for me, but there's just something about a hero riding on a horse. The Lone Ranger, the Duke, the man with no name, Brave Star. I've eagerly awaited the opportunity to have a steed-mounted He-Man to display in my classics collection. Am I glad to hear that? I wonder what Stridor thinks about his new home in the 80s toy museum. This new electro thought monitor I've developed should show us exactly what's on Stridor's mind. Free! 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 Free? But he's just a robot. I believe he is more than a machine now. But I really like how he looks. He is a living creature now. <laughs> Then he must be set free. It's wrong to keep anything that longs to walk free. <sighs> yeah, you're right. So long, Stridor. It was fun while it lasted. You're free now. Besides, I have a hunch that if we ever need him again, he'll be there. <laughs> and he'll also be on Big Bad Toy Store if you want to enjoy your own classic Stridor. For a bit. Click the Big Bad Toy Store link in the show notes to support the channel. Join the discussion in the comment section, share the video if you enjoyed it, and to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Nerd Mistake. <laughs>